Okay, so here's an enlarged model of the Empower 2 self-ligating bracket from American Orthodontics. Um, this allows us to be able to see the bracket in a little bit better detail. Um, so when you go to open it, say here's the tooth, it's on the tooth just like this. There's two ways that you can open it. You can open it by putting something in this hole and pulling up, which you will never ever ever do in our office. Or you will put something on here and push up like that to open the gate, which we will always do. So as far as we are concerned in our office, this hole does not exist. Never touch it for any reason ever. So this is a, an enlarged version of the end of the instrument. The instrument looks similar to this. It's, it'll have a different end on it, but it looks similar to this. It's got a tiny little ball on the end, so here's an enlarged version of that. So that's what we're looking at here. This is the instrument that you'll use to open these in the mouth. So what you'll do is you'll take this instrument. It's on the tooth like this. You'll put this instrument 90 degrees to the tooth, and you'll touch it. Let's say my hand is the tooth, and this is on the tooth. You'll put it 90 degrees to the tooth. Not like this. 90 degrees to the tooth like that. And then you slide up till you hit the base of the bracket right there. And then you lift up very slightly and you'll ride over the base of the bracket and you'll feel that you're in that notch right there. So you 90 degrees to the tooth, hit the base of the bracket, ride up over the base and there you are. And then you just pull up like this. That's all you gotta do. Okay, so what this looks like in the mouth is this. The patient will be upside down like this when they're sitting in the chair. That little whale tail is right here. So you'll come at it 90 degrees to the tooth like this, so that this is pointing straight at the tooth. You'll hit the base of the bracket and I'll be very quiet and you can hear it click on there maybe. So that's all it is, riding over the base of that bracket into that little tail, hold on to the edge of the tooth, push up with your thumb, and it pops open just like that. Just like that. Bottom teeth are very similar. You come right here. They always open to the occlusal or the incisal edge. So you'll put it 90 degrees to the tooth, Just like that. So as I stated before, whenever you're opening it, this hand is just holding the instrument. This is the hand that's applying the pressure. So you put it in the little tail, you support the edge of the tooth, and then push up on it with the opposing finger, in this case my thumb. On the bottom is just the opposite. You get that in there. You're holding the edge of the tooth with your thumb and pushing up with your index finger and that counterbalances that force and keeps it a lot more comfortable for the patient. Sometimes what'll happen when you go to open this, if an assistant pushes, so here it is on the tooth just like that, if instead of coming at it at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the tooth, which is what you should do, if you have somebody who tries pushing up on it like this, sometimes this thing will get behind this, what I call the whale tail, it looks like a little fish's tail, Sometimes they'll get behind that, and then this will bend out like that. And when it's like that, you can't open the gate because it stops it right here. So when that, if that happens, just let the doctor know. And what the doctor should do is take this instrument, put it right here, and bend that back down straight. So you just put it right there because it's bent out like this. Get a hold of it, you bend it down flat like it was before, and then you should be able to open the gate. So you can avoid that, again, by doing it just like I showed you, 90 degrees of the tooth, hit the base of the bracket, a little bit up over the base, and there you are. Keep it 90 degrees to the tooth, and you just push open like that. And nothing should ever, ever break. Again, never touch that hole for any reason ever. Now, when you go to close the gates, so you want to get the wire, so this simulates the arch wire. 
So the goal is you want that wire to be completely flush in the base of the bracket, and then you just push this closed with your thumb and it should snap closed just like that. If it does not snap closed, 99% of the time there's one reason, and that's this wire is not totally flush into the base of the bracket. So if it's up like this and you go to close it, it can hang up like that and not close all the way. So what you do is you just make sure that gate is open. You push in on this side with an instrument or a pusher or something like that. Get it in there completely and then push it shut and then it closes all the way. The way that you know that it's closed all the way is you'll see these little um, kind of teeth or flanges on this gate and then there's a notch on the bracket where each of those go. So you want these uh, little sort of teeth to fit in that notch. If they're out here in front when you close it like that, then you're not. this is not pushed in completely. So if it's out here like that and you close it and this rides up over and those little teeth are out here, no good. Open the gate again, make sure that that wire is pushed completely flush into the base of the bracket and then you push it closed and those little teeth should close right behind these the tops of the tie wings here this is what it looks like in the mouth so you get your wire in there you get your midline uh, mark lined up on the midline and then you just go around one by one make sure that the wire is totally in flush and you just put a little bit of gentle pressure and then just snap shut just like that if you have to push any harder than that it's because the wire is not in the bracket slot totally flush. Pushing harder on this gate is never the correct answer. Never. It's They're not hard to close if nothing's in their way. So if they are hard to close, that means something is in the way. Sometimes it'll be like this, if you can see right here, where the wire is outside the slot right there. If you shut it, it shuts really easy, but that wire is not engaged, as you can see. So you have to make sure that you're pushing that wire in there so that it's totally flush in that slot. So you can just push with your fingers, you can push with this thing, you can push with a pusher, whatever you gotta do, you just make sure it's in the bracket slot when you shut the gate. And like I showed you on the bigger model, make sure that these little teeth, it's hard to see because these are so tiny, but there's these little teeth that have to go back behind these notches and make sure that those are back behind the notches and not out in front. Now also, you know that this is completely closed correctly because you can see the tie wings higher than this little part of the gate. Sometimes if you're seating a rectangular wire, it's pushing out on the gate and the gate will just hit the top of these little slots and not go back behind and seat in the slots. And it will be, let me see if I can simulate what that looks like. It'll look like this where that is flush with the top of the tie wings. That is not completely closed. So that means that you need to push in on the wire and then gently seat this into place. So you'll push in on the wire and it should seat down no problem. But you have to be really meticulous because it's easy to miss. You want to see these tie wings sticking up higher than the top of that gate. So self-ligating brackets have much less friction of the wire in the slot, so they have a tendency to want to slide over as people are chewing, and it'll get really long and pokey on one side and pull out of the six and seven on the other side. So if that's happening and it's always sliding to the right, let's say, you'll place a crimp on the wire, and you want to place the crimp so that it is locked onto the wire. So not like you put a crimp on an open coil where it just closes and can slide passively. You want this to lock on there. And so let's say this wire is always sliding to the right. You could just place a crimp on the wire just on the mesial of this upper right one. That way it prevents the wire from sliding over to the right. So to place that on, you grab a leg cutter, not like a wine guard, which is how you would place one if you want it to slide. With a leg cutter, what you're trying to do is bite into the wire with the um, with the crimp. So you place it on there nice and snug, really good. I'll usually lock it on on one side, then I'll flip this around and do it on the other so that it'll crimp it 
like here and here, and you really squeeze on there. Be careful not to cut through and cut the wire, but you really want to squeeze it. And then what you'll do is you'll take your fingernail or um, a scaler or something like that. You'll get on one side of this crimp and you'll try to pull. And you do not want it to slide on the wire. You want it to be bit into the wire so that it won't slide. And that's how you place a crimp onto these wires for the self-ligating brackets. When using self-ligating brackets, you do not need to put colors on or O ties, but patients usually really want the colors, so we'll place O ties just for aesthetic reasons. So you can either place it all the way around like a regular round O tie, or you can place it in a cross pattern from one tie wing to the opposing opposite tie wing, and you can cross them this way, you can cross them the other way. So how I do that is I just get it on one side, roll it on over to the other, just like that. This way provides less friction on the wire because it's not pushing down on the wire. This side provides a little bit more friction. Either one works fine, just uh, the doctors sometimes specify which they prefer.